All right, come on, all you wires. You gotta cooperate. I got a big old dinner I gotta put in there. Hey gang, it's Paul with Sled Pack. Welcome back to our channel. Now, obviously, we would never do that with a hammer, but you all know where I'm coming from, right? We've all been there. We've gotten our linemans in there. We've gotten the end of a hammer. We're trying to push the wires back to make room for that big old new ground fault we gotta put in there, or in this case, a dimmer for our new LED lights. Now, this used to be a single pole switch that controlled the two receptacles on the wall behind me. Those are hot all the time now, and our electricians were here the other day. They ran a 12-3 for me, I'm sorry, a 14-3 to the other side of the room for another box. We're gonna have three-way switches in here for the lights in this room. But now we've got a bunch of wires in here, and there's no way I can get a dimmer in there. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to shine the spotlight on something that we think doesn't get talked about enough, and that is box fill. So what is box fill? It's the total volume of all the wires, the conductors, the devices, and all the fittings inside a box. The NEC is very specific about how much you can put in a box like this, because if you overfill it, now I have to push all those wires back. We can create arcing, we can have overheating, we could even break a wire, and that's very dangerous. So how do we know how much we can put in there? Let's walk over to the table for a second. Have you ever been to the home center and you picked up an electrical box? and you've looked in the back and there's all kind of numbers in the back. One of the numbers in the back of this single gang old work box, it says 14.0 cubic inch volume. So that's the, that's the capacity inside. That's the volume inside the box. The single gang adjustable depth box has a capacity of 21 cubic inches. This single gang nail on box, 22.5 cubic inches. And check out this big old two gang box right here, 48.2 cubic inches, and it even has metric. For our metric friends, 789 cubic centimeters. Let's take a look at the metal one. We looked at all these plastic ones. This is a four by four by two and an eighth welded metal box. It has a capacity of 30.3 cubic inches. Now, I can't mount a device to this box. I can mount a device to all these just like that, right? We're all familiar with that. But on this metal box, I need a mud ring. That's what this is. Now I can mount the device to those two holes. And this mud ring has volume also. This is a half inch tall mud ring and it has a volume of three cubic inches. And when I put it together with this box, now my total volume is 33.3 cubic inches. Pretty cool, huh? So now that we know the volume of all these assorted boxes, we need to come back over here and calculate the volume of all the conductors, devices, and fittings in this application in order to choose the right box. How are we gonna do that? Well, believe it or not, there's an app for that. That's what the home screen looks like on BoxFill Pro, all kind of things you can do. But for BoxFill, there's two ways to do it on the app. You can actually count the individual wires right there, but we found it's much easier just to count the cables right there. Now we know we have 14 gauge wire, and they are 14 twos, at least three of them are. One, two, three, two wire, 14 gauge right there. The number pad comes up, I've got three of them. And I've got one three wire. I've got a 14 three right there. Boom, one of those. And how do you know what wire you have if you're not familiar with working with it? You're gonna have to read it off the insulation. Now, in modern construction, the white ones are 14, the yellows are 12, but this is an old house. We've actually got some, some black ones over here. We're gonna show you that later. So if you're not sure, you can try to, try to read the, uh, the wire size okay. right here. See, it says 14.2 right there. But even sometimes that's hard to do. So now we got all our cables counted. Now it wants to know how many devices. This is a single gang box. We're just gonna have one dimmer here, one device. Now the next thing you gotta do is the largest ground. We have 14 gauge wire. Our largest ground is gonna be 14 gauge, right there. And I'm just gonna hit this clamps button right here. We're gonna talk about that later. So now you can see that it's calculated a box that needs a volume of 26 cubic inches. I bet this is half of that. So that's a great app. Good to have on your phone, use it at the job site. Couple things it doesn't account for in the 2020 NEC. It doesn't account for pass-through wiring. I've never seen that in a residential application where the Romax just passes through a box. That would actually be kind of weird. Probably more on the commercial side, you see a lot more of that. And it also doesn't account for the 0.25 allowance when you have more than four grounds per the new NEC. So now that we know we need 26 cubic inches, we can start rolling out some boxes. 
Now we know this, this one's too small. This is probably just a little bigger than the one that's in the wall. That's like half of what we need. And that nuts? This one's 21, still too small. This one's 22.5. It is the biggest single gang box I could find. Now it does not have integral clamps. So we could deduct two from that other number. We're at 24. We're pretty close. I could probably get it all in here and I'd sleep fine. But we're gonna go a little better. We're actually gonna put a metal box in there. We're gonna have 33.3 cubic inches of capacity. And this is gonna work great. Sometimes the problem with these is this part right here. These old bake-like boxes are pretty small and sometimes the sheathing is cut in such a way that the sheathing won't go through here. Remember, we need to have that sheathing come through the box. We can't have it end out here. And that metal box is gonna be a little taller. We can use an exterior mounted clamp. It's gonna be great. All right, so let's take out this old Bakelite box, put in our new metal box, and give all those conductors some room to breathe. Alrighty gang, that's all done. That was very easy, less than 15 minutes to put in the metal box. I really like working with metal boxes sometimes, tasting back to my commercial days. Now with all the conductors in here, the internal clamps, the grounds, and the device, we needed 26 cubic inches of space. We got 33, we're good to go. That came out so good, I think it's time to go do that other one. But first, let's look at this old Bakelite box. We measured it and the volume inside is like 12 cubic inches, less than half of what we needed. I haven't had to find the volume of a box since I was in like middle school, dude. Yeah, high school maybe. That goes in the trash, and so since we know the single gang is about 12 cubic inches, we can pretty much estimate the volume of the double gang one right here is gonna be about 24. We need 28, it's pretty close. This one's gonna be easy to change, but we're gonna go plastic, baby. That's better. That's why we double check, gang. Okay. Now the front of this Bakelite box is attached to the face of that stud by this piece of wire. So I just have to cut it. I don't want to ruin our paneling that really nice 1970s paneling to uh, take the strap off or that wire off. I'm using my diagonals. Don't give me any grief for that. 
It's a steel wire. Now it's free. Cool. Alrighty guys, our old double gang box is in the trash. Here's our new one. This is a Carlon B249B. It's an old slash new work box. It's a new work box because you have this mounting flange here to put on the face of a stud. And it's an old work box because there are these two locations here where you can put a screw into the side of the stud. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And this flange is designed to break off. See all those slots right there? We're just going to bend it back and forth, fatigue the plastic. That's trash. And now we're ready to install it. We just got to make this hole a little bit bigger. Those were catching a little bit. What did we do before bus saws? There we go. All right, let me get, grab a couple of screws and we'll mount that thing to the stud, put the cables in there. Alrighty, that one's done. Got the circuit back on for the hall light so we won't go blind in here. We can see where we're going. Let's head on into this bathroom right here. This is the hall bath. And uh, we had a lot of comments on this bathroom and the master bath in our previous electrical video about a 15 amp circuit. So now we know who's not watching our videos all the way to the end because we addressed that game. So let me tell you what happened. This right here, this old Romex right here, that's a 12-2 all the way back to the panel, a home run, and it's on a 20 amp breaker. What happened, the original electrician took off from here with 14 gauge wire for the rest of the bathroom. I looked at all that and assumed this was 14 gauge, but fortunately it wasn't. So now it's all 12 gauge in here. So this is a home run to the panel for these two ground faults on the vanity. We got a home run here, all the way back to the panel on a 20 amp circuit. And this will be our heat vent light and our LED lights in the ceiling. So we're good to go. But this box is too small. We kind of had a lot of fun with that app. We even did it on this one. I need 15.75, that box is 21, I'm good to go. Right here on this double gang, I need 29.25 cubic inches. We know this box is about 24, and you can see I'll never get two dimmers in there. So we're gonna put this monster 48 cubic inch box right there. So we're gonna treat this one like a new construction, use the flange. If we wanted to, we could simply use these and not use the flange so you don't have a hump in the drywall. We had a lot of comments about that too. So that's kind of a good idea. You have either way, and that's the beauty of these boxes. But we're not going to show you that because it's the exact same thing we've been doing this whole video. But there are a couple things I want to show you outside. Come on out and I'll show you what I mean. Alrighty guys, we're in the backyard and the owner had this beautiful electric gate installed. It's a sliding gate instead of a swinging gate because there's not a lot of room back here for the gate to swing. But we had three issues with it. Two of them were, cut, were pretty major to me. The first issue was an aesthetic one. There was no plug here for the gate installers to get their power. So see this half inch conduit down here? They ran it all the way around this chimney. They had all these 90s tucked against the building. They turned again here, went all the way down, turned up, and there's a plug by the back door. So they made up their own cord and plugged it in. There's all the 90s. We don't need those anymore, but uh, I think I have a project in mind for this weekend. Stay tuned, I might use them. So the aesthetic issue we took care of by removing all the conduit. And when the electricians came earlier this week, they put a plug right here. This is our master bathroom, so they could run a cable right down that wall. And they put a plug with a ground fault that's tied into the attic right there for the gate, so much better. We thought about hardwiring it, in other words, just making it up tight in here, or putting a switch tied into a ground fault circuit. But we felt like this was a means of disconnect for the gate installers, if they have to come work on the gate, they can just unplug it. So pretty convenient for them. So kind of the two safety issues were that plug over there by the back door, and we're gonna show you that in a minute, it had reverse polarity. So we actually fixed that. And then when the electricians were putting the plug on the cord right here, we cut the cord, it was really long. We discovered that the installers never hooked up the ground to the plug. I'm gonna unplug it for you. Right here, they just cut the green wire in this SO cord way back here. Why? In the world, did they not ground it? 
That would be terrible. If we had a ground fault in this gate, like that ground fault on that refrigerator that gave me the worst shock of my life, we did a whole video on that, some kid could come up, hey, is Jimmy home? And he's going to get lit up because this was not grounded. Now it's grounded, plugged into a ground fault. We are very safe. Let me plug this back in. There's one more thing I want to show you. Alrighty gang, here's that receptacle by the back door I was talking about. Now, I already took it apart for you because there's something I want to show you inside, actually a couple of things. Now this was already here. I added this extension ring. In the brick is a single gang metal box mounted horizontally, obviously. Now two number 12 cables come in from the back and they come through a connector like this. So they're coming straight out of the back of the box. There was no way I could fold those number 12s over to make room for this ground fault. That's why I added the extension to give us some more room. And extension rings, extension boxes are a great thing to have and it works great in a situation like this. Now the reason I have this other one is because I broke this one. Let's look at this one first. See these two tabs? That's what's used to fasten the extension ring to the existing box. And when too tight Selic tighten the screw on this side, I broke that tab off. See it right there? So I'm going to replace that put a spacer behind there so that won't happen again. And we can put that ground fault back and we're good to go. Now I did pick up this cover for that box, but what I found over the last week is it's kind of a pain to plug something in. When it's like this and you open it, you literally have to bend all the way over to plug something in. So I'm gonna get rid of that, probably get a cover that opens sideways or something different, maybe opens a little bit more this way, and that one's gonna be fine. There's one more box I wanna show you, and it's actually a Bakelite box that we left in place because it is fine. Over here on the storage room side, there was a three prong receptacle right here fed by one number 12. Of course, not ground fault protected. So if we have a number 12 cable, we got the hot, the neutral and the ground. The device is two. We're talking about box fill now. It's number 12, five times 2.25. That's the multiplier for number 12. What is that? Is that 11.25? And remember that old bake light box we measured inside? Its capacity was 12 cubic inches and that fit fine. So I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna put a bubble cover on that and we're good to go. Alrighty gang, that's gonna be a wrap for this video. We really like making electrical videos and we know you guys like watching them. If I made any mistakes, I know you got me covered below in the comments. And uh, from where Jordan and I are standing, it looks like your like button is really stuffed into that box. You need to download that app on like button, fill box capacity change that box so your like button can breathe. Once it can breathe, smash it for us. We really appreciate that. That means the world to us. Give us all your own tips and tricks, your comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Doing electric, we like showing you our tips and tricks. And if I made any mistakes, I know you're gonna get me covered in the comments below. <laughs> videos for you guys we know you like watching them so get press that like uh, change that like button box so it's uh, oh man. <laughs>